It is Thursday night, rather late, and I'll start with an anecdote. Um, last weekend, I organized the uh, move of a family office, and it was a three-room office moving across town, and uh, I had hired some men to do the work, and they showed up on the late side, and they felt bad about it, so he had um, requested a friend of his, who also had a work crew, come over to help out. And there was like seven guys moving stuff and it was all happening really quickly. They were asking questions. They were very professional and they got it done in an incredibly short amount of time, but I felt really overwhelmed. Um, I just sort of stood there staring at the wall just to sort of, uh, or I walked in circles just to kind of like keep my wits about me. And it doesn't sound like a big deal to move an office and it wasn't, but it was just all happening so quickly. I just had to, have some space and that's kind of what happened with me uh, recently including today because it really scares me when things go uh, well considering the year we've had it scares me when things go even okay let alone well and it's not like we crashed you know 30 percent today I mean we went down like one percent but so many crucially important things have happened lately that I'm always looking over my shoulder about like okay what's next what bad thing's gonna to happen to stop all this? Because weekends in particular scare me. That's when like Yellen comes out and announces some great new program or whatever. And I, I, I cannot know when they will be out of bullets. Because there will come a time, and that time may be here, um, but there will come a time when they just, their little cute programs won't work anymore. And um, I don't wanna get out too soon, but I don't wanna stick around either because i have witnessed all too closely precisely what that results in so having said all that uh, i actually stopped looking at the screens before the market even closed today i just walked away from it all and i've been away from it ever since then i worked so long in that elon book review that i figured okay i've, I've done my done my bit for king and country for the day that's enough but you know me i feel guilty easily and so i felt compelled even at this late hour to and we'll back to the computer, still not looking at the futures. I have no idea what the market's doing right now, nor do I intend to until I wake up uh, Friday morning. I just don't want to see it. Um, but I at least wanted to go through uh, the indexes swiftly, some just blowing right past, and just say a few words about about them. And I have not, I never rehearsed this stuff, obviously, but uh, this would be kind of a quick take, even though the market's been closed for um, you know eight hours. All right, so the All World Index. Um, this is really interesting. On the one hand, we are back at equilibrium. We have we have reached the point again where we were at the base of this bullish pattern and the base of this bearish pattern. This is I'm not I've never been a football player, but I think it's called the line of scrimmage. I think that's what it's called. It's essentially right smack dab in the middle of the the enemies here. Um, from the bearish perspective, this is a lovely little head and shoulders pattern, and it could well send us lower by, uh, you know, maybe down to this kind of area, 30 points or so, 25 points or so, it's feasible, something like that. Um, and that, I can tell you, then I would seriously thank my lucky stars and take profits uh, in general. Uh, Dow Jones Composite, um, I don't think that incorporates today's data yet. Uh, today is the 21st, I believe. Here's the Comp Q, which is uh, also represents the prospect of a move down to this level. Um, we banged our head against Fibonacci several times, did a beautiful tag of it here, just picture perfect, and then we down it goes. And that, you know, it's easy to lose track of this stuff. I've, I've kind of forgotten just how, I mean, this to me, considering what we've been through, this is like an incredible bear festival. The fact that we've sort of kind of gone down for a few weeks is, is almost like science fiction. Um, but this, this kind of thing is what terrifies me. Like it just, it can terminate instantly and just, you know, completely screw everybody over all over again. So it seems to me we may well challenge and perhaps even break the lows of the 18th. And the 18th um, is the lowest we've been for months. And while we're in the neighborhood, I'll just draw a little line like so, signaling 
uh, the importance of that line. And if we can do that, you know, the, the next fib down is the, is the key. Um, as I said, I'm not going to stop at every one of these. Um, U.S. financials. This is extremely positive for the bears that we've we've reversed away hard uh, from that dashed line. Uh, large caps, it's like a, it's like a replicate of the uh, all world index. So we're not going to bother with that or the Hang Seng or the gold bugs. Uh, the Indu down 370. Um, this is kind of interesting. So take note of this line right here and further take note of how close we're getting to possibly breaking it. And that is no tiny line. That is, that's a, that's quite the BFD. That's the, it's going to be hard to utter these words at the bottom of the financial, at the bottom of the COVID crash, excuse me, the bottom of the COVID crash. And that's been intact for uh, three and one half years. So if we have a, if we have a day tomorrow, anything like we had Thursday, we'll actually crack that for the first time in, um, you know, 40 months. Um, NASDAQ 100. Okay. This is a, this could be a splash of cold water. Um, on the one hand, we are fun, We're essentially back at Fibonacci at this point. And we've, we've pretty much matched the low of the 18th. So, I mean, this may be all she wrote. Having said that, this particular Fibonacci sequence, I got to tell you, it doesn't really impress me. In fact, it, it sounds like I'm just charting my book as it were, but I'm, I'm kind of inclined to just shit gain the whole thing because, you know, I can see right now, it, there's just not many instances of this being important with respect to support and resistance. I mean, I'll leave it there for now but i'm just it doesn't look right it, it doesn't it doesn't i'm not at all impressed by that how that looks i mean i'll just in real time here just kind of screw around with it a little bit see if anything better comes over that's not that great either um so yeah not really impressive um yeah I'll, I'll leave it but i don't like it i just have, I have nothing better to offer you uh here's the sp100 uh, a little bit cleaner here. There's a nice clean neckline to that inverted head and shoulders. Would make sense to traverse down to there. The all important Russell 2000, and this is one of the things that just made me kind of hobble away from my computer and like not just not want to deal anymore because um, I was having too much good news. Um, but in this case, let's let's be more conservative here. We're going to drag this down to the price gap like so. And is that right? Do I want to do that? Let's see if I want to do that. Um, there's various possibilities here. It's a little tough. It's not going to win any awards as the cleanest head and shoulders ever created. I'm just going to, I'll do that. I mean, I think that's appropriate. Um, so in this case, the, and as, as I'm, I mean, part, I do this partly for myself, just because it's like therapy here. We're just sort of you and me, I'm talking, you're listening, some of you. Um, but this is yet another example of, we've got a little ways to go. You know, this is, let's just, let's just say that between Friday and or Monday, we, we, we approach this line again, which would be a pretty big deal. Um, that's important support. We've had, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and just like what, a dozen instances where that's proved to be an important level. And if you want to say it more crudely, we've got like six instances of, of uh, time blocks that that was support. So approaching 1700, I think would be tremendously strong support for the Russell. Okay, the creme de la creme, the apple of my eye, whatever you want to call it. Um, this did exactly what I've been dreaming of, uh, the socks. And I, I'm noticing the time here, we're getting kind of on in years, so I better pick up the pace. But th this is just fan damn -tastic and um, demands careful observation. It is the biggest position I think I've ever had in my life, actually. Uh, it's about eight times bigger than my second biggest position. It's just, it's big. Um, and so this is very, very interesting and exciting. The semiconductors. Um, and, uh, you know, for the premium members, I've, I've offered my own projections there where I think it could get to. S&P 500. Uh, we are approaching 43.11. And I really hope that's not the end of this. Um, 
I mean, this is that's one of the key reasons I walked away. I just I'm terrified of this ending because it just it feels so good uh, for this to be going this way. But we can't just stick around. There are two major support zones here. There's this one and there's the trend line, which is just a little bit below it. Um, if by some crazy miracle we break them both, then then we open up the notion of the 4155 um, level, which works pretty well because of all this. You know, you can see the many instances of resistance that it represented before. So Friday is going to be an interesting day. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'd fallen out of love with this uh, tidal wall thing. It's looking kind of good again. I got to tell you, th this is topping out pretty nicely. So, um, you know, at least I think it's going to get back to the midline. I think that's completely, completely plausible. Um, I'm past, I'm well past 10 minutes here. So, you know what? I think let's just wrap it up with the old utility here, which has been so important. Uh, this fell nicely today. It actually was, I think, up um, part of the day and a little bit discouraging there, but it, it really tumbled near the end. I've mentioned this diamond pattern dozens of times. Um, this is my second biggest position and it's, it's a honey. I really like what I see here. And in spite of me saying, oh, you know, we might not have one day of droopage left, you know, we may be done with this, et cetera, et cetera. This looks many weeks away from being done, uh, may, maybe even months away from being done. So uh, I'm very pleased with this as well. Anyway, I'll end it here. I'll feel a little bit better once this is posted. Um, but we are in the thick of it now. And uh, it breaks my heart that this is going to end for the bears at some point because, you know, we are in the sweetest of sweet spots. We've got a government shutdown looming. We are in the most bearish month of the year. Uh, we've got some amazing analogs happening. Um, the VIX is still like, you know, like at 17 or something and not 40. So the, the, I, I feel the bearish sales are full of wind right now. Uh, it's just knowing when the doldrums hit again, that depresses me. So uh, I guess we'll try to enjoy it while we can. So that's it for me.